Winners and losers with our financial expert, Rob Black. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Daria. So I know that uh, some financials are coming up. Apple, McDonald's, Coke, and Amazon. I think I own a little Amazon, but to tell you, I, it's a set it and forget it for me. So how are, how are they expected to do? I own some Amazon, and they're expected to do a nice quarter. Um, last week, Alphabet came out with Google's numbers, and they raised their dividend. Amazon hasn't created a dividend yet, so a lot of people are expecting it soon. And it tends to move stocks higher. So congrats on owning that. I own Amazon as well. Four out of five companies have surpassed earnings expectations this quarter. So it's, it's a nice quarter so far. This is the busiest week of the earnings season, which happens four times a year. Apple comes out on Thursday, Amazon on Tuesday. Those are the two that I'm going to be watching. Um, and we have a Fed meeting that wraps up Tuesday and wraps up on Wednesday. So we'll get a press conference. Nothing's expected to happen other than theory about what's going to happen and when. Okay, my uh, my ears always perk up when you talk about travel stories. And in this case, it's Venice. And I guess you would need to pay an entry fee. How are they going to work this logistically and how much would be the fee? I don't know the logistics of it, but it's about five euros. And ultimately, a lot of cities just get overrun with tourists during the summer. And this is the first big city in the world to um, announce an admittance fee for visitors. It's a tough city to get into with the canals and such, I believe. Mm. Um, and they're trying to stop the people that want to eat, pray, and love for one day only uh, versus spending more time there. But um, they lose huh. a lot of money as a city because tourists are kind of rude um, and they kind of trash the place. So I get the idea. I'm dying to see how it's executed, Daria. Yeah, or if they put it like in a fee and a percentage of your hotel bill or if there's a gate. <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of... Yeah, I can't envision how they're going to figure that out. I also didn't understand how YouTube worked because I didn't realize, you know, I know commercials on TV, they make a lot of money, but wow, YouTube is pulling in money. Yeah. Um company like CBS uh, with 60 Minutes, they put their programming on YouTube a couple days after it's on the network. Uh -huh. And it's pulling in about $8 billion in advertising in the last 90 days. That's just the first quarter. So if you throw that by four quarters, you're looking at about $32 billion in those little ads that run prior to your spot. Um, or you can pay $15, $16 a month and not get the commercials. But um, YouTube, for something that was once silly dog videos, it's it's a pretty big financial network now at this point Man. in time. Yeah, the whole model is different now. Um, also, uh, the NFL draft, I'm surprised. I mean, I know people love watching football games, but to watch the draft, that just surprised me that it's such big viewing uh, numbers. 775,000 fans actually went and didn't even watch it on TV. Gosh. Um, that's for Detroit's going to pull in $160 million in hotels, bars, and restaurants. Next year's draft is going to be done at, in Green Bay, which I don't think they can handle 775,000 people because that's a teeny tiny town or a hovel of a town, so to speak. So right. the NFL is smart. Um, I tuned it in a couple times this weekend. I don't know why. <laughs> the 49ers, they drafted a lot of uh, receivers, which again, I don't know why. I, yeah. Um, I think, it, I like, I think here's why. I like to see the jumping for joy. I like to see, I call them yeah. the kids because they're so young. Yay, with their families. And then I think there's sort of like a, you know how you watch curling in the Olympics? You just want to, I don't know, looky-loo or something. Uh, for teams like the Jets, who are always bad, the dream dies the day of the draft. So you get hope is eternal until after the draft, and then reality sets in. So 49ers will have a good year this year. I think they drafted the receivers for the record so they can pay receivers less because Purdy's about to make a lot more money as a quarterback. Right. Okay, let's talk about since we did NFL NBA because there's also a new model. When I when I hear they sign with a network, I get that, like ESPN. But when they if they sign with Amazon, what does that mean? Well, Amazon's worth $2 trillion. So basically the NBA, their TV deal lapsed last month. So they had a deal with TNT and with ESPN for $26 billion for nine years. Now they're starting to negotiate the final terms with Prime Video, Amazon Prime, and with ESPN. But Prime Videos can get regular season games, they're going to get postseason games. Oh. Um, pretty significant. So the NBA wanted a streamer, ultimately, and they chose not Apple. They didn't choose Google. Uh, they didn't choose NBC in this deal. They stayed with ESPN. And ESPN is going to get about 80 games down from 100. And they're going to get the exclusive rights to the uh, finals on ABC. It's a 10-year deal, it looks like. And the WNBA is going to be packaged both with Amazon Prime and uh, ESPN with this deal. So pretty interesting. Um, Thursday Night Football on Amazon, it's been kind of clunky. 
Um, but yet we tune in and we watch it because uh, we're a nation of loving our live sports. And I think this is a coup for Amazon pulling this off, getting into the NBA. Very good. We've come full circle then talking about now we'll be waiting for those Amazon numbers today. All right. Thanks a lot, Rob. Thanks, Daria. And taking a look at Rob's contact information because a lot of people have questions or suggestions for what Rob should cover or answer. And you can go ahead and email him directly at rob at robblack.com or reach him on Facebook or X.